Hello, dear friends. We will look today at the diary of Lieutenant Brand, an officer of the Wehrmacht. His diary goes from June 28, 1943, the year he considers the darkest year in all German history. So now let us begin. August 14th. On August 10th, I was reassigned to the regiment in accordance with the order of the division. The Russian army keeps on firing at our positions with heavy gunfire and mortar fire. We have a good position, but our forces are extremely small. The Russians are bravely keeping up their courage, but in their minds, they are at home. Within the next few days, another large Russian advance is expected. But all this is nothing compared to what is happening in the homeland. My thoughts have been consumed by this for many weeks now. Hamburg is the one who suffers the most. Berlin is probably going to face the same fate, and we could do nothing to save it or help it. It depresses us all beyond belief, makes us paralyzed by all our energies, all our defensive successes notwithstanding. Germany is in a terrible condition. August 15th. The front is a bit more anxious than usual. The Russian soldiers are dropping phosphorus bombs every night. The fine weather makes people think of the peace. I rarely hear so many rumors and guesses now. All are trying to make themselves believe that a happy end of the war is at hand. We conduct the policy of the ostrich and we are still deceiving ourselves. Anyway, I refuse to believe that this war will last for another four years either. But which end would that be? What possible way could it be? Politics is now everybody's concern. Some are worried about the future of Germany. Others about the destruction of their personal property. Some think about the awful ravages in their homeland. Others think about the annihilation of cultural objects. The British and Americans have destroyed more art and cultural treasures in Germany and Italy so far than all that both nations have made and will ever make in this field. A decisive question for Germany now would be if it is able to keep itself and its identity, even if only in a broken condition, caught in the grip between Bolshevism and Americanism. August 16th Outside, there is a relentless rain. Poor soldiers in their dugouts, but the victims of the bombs are more unfortunate, wandering all over the world with nothing to lose. A mad anger takes over me again, which turns even to hatred of the government. Our poor nation! All of us have lost the ability to laugh. Nevertheless, we must stand, and we will stand. A nation that withstands such difficulties and sufferings, that is ready to sacrifice so much without becoming hopeless, cannot help living unless these fools finally destroy it. August 18th. There began the advance at the village of Izium. Within the first two days, the Russian soldier even managed to achieve some successes. The infantry of the Russians is told to have been considerably better this time. There is a big and decisive question. Does the Russian army consciously hold back its best forces for the winter advance, or is it really exhausted and good stuff happens only as an exception? My fear, however, is that we can expect everything from them. On this point, we should not deceive ourselves with false expectations. Only if we had our army of 1941. This battle in Russia would be coming to an end now. Assuming we had managed to take it through the winter, we could have some perspectives by the spring. Anything depends on our endurance and on the homeland. Sicily is lost, though that is somewhat expected, but it is a heavy hit because the island is considered a part of Europe already. The most serious questions for the future are, what will happen to Italy and the Balkans? Are we able to keep them? Are we able to stop the bombardments of our homeland? Will our homeland hold out? Finally, I got a letter from Elizabeth. Her entire property had been lost, and what remains is in extreme danger. Meanwhile, as before, we cherish every item. Each soldier's thoughts go back to his homeland throughout the day, but still, they keep their courage and endurance. If the confidence in victory is low, the desire to fight to the end persists. It is the guarantee of the eternal existence of our nation. With these soldiers, Germany will never fall. August 19th Now I feel very lonely and homesick. In addition, there is a perpetual worry about family and property, and even more about Germany and its future. The Russian soldier is comparatively inactive, but we still have one to three men killed every day. August 23rd The Russians get more restless. Our battalion is again participating in violent defensive battles and suffering heavy losses. In the morning, the Russians were rejoicing in their trenches. At that, they were waving red flags. What we thought was that they were preparing for an attack, but nothing ever happened. As it turns out, we had given up on Kharkov. 
it was another heavy strike. While fighting in all areas of the front continues with unrelenting intensity, our soldiers even suggest that the city of Stolino seems to be abandoned too. It thickens the atmosphere. The year 1943 will evidently be the most shocking year in German history. Whoever had to suffer so many losses and severe damages to one nation in so short a period of time? And the bombardments of Germany go on and on. Everywhere, there is not a ray of hope for the Germans. In the meantime, not everyone understands the situation. We are facing a frightening picture of the future of our people. August 24th All of us are enjoying the last fine summer days. Everyone does not want to worry about winter, but we are already preparing for it. The losing of Kharkov should affect our part of the front as well. To the south, near the city of Izium, there are fierce battles. The Russians are quite restless at our side as well. The air attacks have intensified again. Besides, the bombardment of Berlin has weighed everyone down. Elizabeth and I might easily find ourselves broke after this war. Besides, we are tied to our belongings. Maybe my mind is too much of a pessimist, but if only there was something I could do to help, or anything I could do to make a difference. The suffering grows to extraordinary levels, and the government is forced to stand by idly. So here is Germany, after ten years of national socialism and after four years of war. Not what we wanted. August 25th. Himmler is Minister of the Interior. Everything is progressing according to the plan. We keep following the path that has been preordained. The end of destiny is unavoidable. To question whether this assignment is really capable of giving the millions of victims of the bombing a cheerfulness and encouraging them to further firmness may now become dangerous. All the same, our people were never so ready to fight and to sacrifice and were never so enthusiastic as on the edge of the fifth year of the war. Better now not to talk about politics and our worries about Germany. But is that really a way to chase away disturbing thoughts? Here, the Russian is very restless. Near Izium, our counterattacks, supported by the dive bombers, have begun. There is heavy firing, which is heard. Several of our men are disabled. In case we have to pull back, we have moved our supply wagon further to the rear and take measures to be on the safe ground. August 26th. There is heavy gunfire again. The Russians are operating with phosphorus again. It is the first time that our artillery has stirred up for a long time as well. Because many units have withdrawn in recent days, our artillery, with increased gunfire, is trying, apparently, to make an impression of a tight front. What is strange is that while in the north and south of us everything is on fire and loud, in our area of the front it is comparatively quiet. For the sake of killing time, I keep writing. Is that why I do it, though? To be honest, it has become a pleasant daily activity for me for a long time now. I have nobody to share my thoughts and my cares with. Lots of people, even clever ones, consider the mere hint of such thoughts as something dangerous, something that could be a national crime. There is something that makes me think until the end, to understand the cause, but the last conclusions I do not dare to confide even to my diary. September 1st. It was four years ago that this tragedy began, a drama that became a tragedy. They had put me at the head of a regimental supply wagon with 100 men and 180 horses. I am 30 kilometers away from the front. September 4th. Here in the rear area, the days run by fast. Plenty of work and worry. It meant that I had to be in charge of accommodation, supplies, and allocations, creating commandant's offices, arranging hunts for partisans. I also had to relocate from the village of Ryshova to the village of Chervani Spil and reorganize the local defense. At that, it rained for two days in a row. The roads were totally swept away and we had to withstand heavy air attacks by the Russians both yesterday and today. In the political arena, there is only sad news. The British have landed in Italy. After the fall of Orl and Kharkov, Taganrog was given up. In the cities of Stolino and Slavyansk, preparations for the evacuation go on. And even Poltava, they say, is in danger. They bombed Berlin again. May the fates be merciful towards us. All the units not engaged in fighting and the evacuation of civilians in our area continue to be relocated to the rear. Everything assumes the form of running away, although the front still holds out. Necessary preventive measures actually take place too hurriedly. The agricultural heads have to turn in their inventory before they have completed the harvest and threshing. By doing so, Germany will get a little. The roads are full of refugees, along with their belongings and families. 
a convenient movement for partisans and strays. We took the Germans who live in Reichshof and the areas around it to the railroad and moved them to the other side of Dnieper. It was on this occasion that I visited Bospolisev, seeing amazing pictures. The world is on fire from the Volga to the Atlantic. September 5th That is a pity that the fields remain unharvested. We will not get out of this struggle against the Russian land and Russian nature as winners. There are so many children, so many women, and they all have babies, and all bring results despite the war and looting, despite the ruins and death. We are fighting here not against the people, but against the nature. But then again, I have to confess to myself that this land is getting nicer and nicer to me every day. Even the communist idea does not yet finally lose its power of attraction, which I notice from time to time among the soldiers and from day to day among the Russians. This is the revenge of existence, which I have been waiting for since the beginning of this war. The village is full of long, pained shouts, and there is an evacuation of the people. There is not much they can carry with them. It is such a pity the fields are still full of unharvested crops. This is all for today. Please support this video with a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Goodbye, and see you all soon.